So we know that works, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. Now the properties we need to give the droppable list are like I was attempting to do before, the hover class. And the hover class is going to, like I said, change the border of this because we've specified a border class inside of our style.css file. And that's just going to be border then. No need to add the dot as you uh, usually would think to do so. So now when we hover an element over this, uh, the border changes to two pixels as opposed to one. So this just uh, ensures that the user knows, yep, uh, that's uh, that's uh, hoverable there. Okay, so uh, now what we want to do is we want to uh, allow um, only a specific set of elements. So let's just say you had this list embedded on a lot of other content in your page uh, that may or may not be draggable. Uh, if you did have other draggable elements, you only want this particular list here to be uh, allowed to be dragged in here. So all li elements draggable inside of this box. So you can either specify a general set or a particular class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to only accept li. And this means that if we have any other draggable objects, they won't be allowed to be dragged inside of this box. So that's extremely important as well. We only want this predefined list uh, to be able to be dragged in there. Uh, in actual fact, what we could do is we could, uh, which we should have done, is give these a class. So item, and this a class of item, and this a class again of item. Uh, and now what we could do is we could change this except to, sorry, item. And now this class here will only be allowed inside of this div area. So you can see that it's still, uh, it's not allowing us there. Uh, that's because we need to specify a dot because we're referencing a class on the page. Uh, so yeah, so now that when we drag it over, it's allowed, but any other uh, draggable elements that don't belong to the class item won't be allowed. So that's extremely important as well. Okay, so now that we've done this, we need to um, create some callback events based on events um, under this droppable. So what we want to do is we want to create a uh, drop function uh, when something has been dropped. So we comma separate, I'm gonna come down a little bit here to make this a bit neater, and I'm gonna specify a drop event here. Now the drop event is going to be a function, so we create a function as we normally would, and the contents are going to go in here. So let me just go ahead and alert uh, dropped again. So that works the same way as the example we looked at previously, where when we drop, it says dropped. But this time, when we actually drop in, we want to take the text associated with the current element we've dragged and append it into this list. So um, let's leave this part for now. Now inside draggable, when we, actually, um, when we actually go ahead and start the dragging, we want to set a variable with the text associated uh, with that element. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna comma separate that and come down. And inside here, I'm gonna say start. So I'm using the start event. And this is obviously, again, a function. Uh, this time inside here, I want to set a variable called contents equal to this, meaning the currently dragged element. So if I was dragging soya milk, contents would then equal soya milk. If I was dragging bread, contents would then equal bread and so on with water and any other elements. So this dot text, which takes the text in between the li tag there. Uh, so contents will now equal the currently dragged element. So the draggable element, once it starts, we have this variable called contents with the name of it. So then what we can do inside of our droppable list under our drop event, we can actually specify um, what we want to append into this list. So for example, or not really for example, what we're actually gonna be doing, we're gonna be appending to list. So list.append, and we want to append contents. Uh, then what we want to do is just uh, append a break onto that uh, contents as well, and then we've got a line break after each one. So now what happens is as we drag the element, it's released and the contents of that is applied into here. So we can take a look at this at a slightly you know, lesser working level and we can um, go ahead and in here, uh, we can just go ahead and alert 
contents. So once something is dropped in, we alert the name of that. So you can see it working sort of more, more purely as opposed to appending it. So once we've dragged something, we grab the contents and apply it once we've dropped it into this list. So again, let's change that back to uh, where it was. Okay. So with the way this has been done, uh, we're picking up all I elements and we're making them draggable. We're only allowing uh, elements or li elements or any element with the uh, class item so it's extremely easy for us to actually just go ahead and create a new um, item as long as the class is still equal to item we can cr go ahead and create uh, a new item uh, for example flower and we can come back and we've got this new flower element which we can now drag because it is an li element and we can still append it to this list so the you know the uh, list really is endless you can add um, an append or create as many li elements as you as you wish uh, and then these will add to the list obviously we've got some styling issues there uh, but we could go ahead and uh, just change our style and we can say overflow auto and uh, as we add items to the list uh, that would then just create scroll bars for us so some CSS styling there and then we have a, a scrollable list so obviously in practice this uh, isn't great because if we were to add soya milk for example accidentally twice we may want it to then say soya milk times two uh, we might also want to be able to remove uh, an item for example uh, there are ways you can do this but for now this is just a short example on dragging and dropping uh, lists